It's 356 right now. Just cut it down so we can get started right at four. Just do whatever you can for a few minutes. I'm sorry. We had to deal with the technical aspects of that little camera. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that handle was going to be in the now live. <laughs> We are live right now. So welcome, everybody. We're going to have a little music for you. Okay, so we'll...
Thank you, Joe, and welcome everyone on Facebook Live this evening as we are here celebrating Christmas Eve 2020. I'm Pastor Phil Anderson of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church. and so glad to have you with us this morning, this evening, as we are looking forward to a great time. We've got special music tonight with Joe Campson playing the piano and Regina Asher will be leading us in music. And we hope that you'll sit back, relax, and enjoy this wherever you are. If you would like to sing along, well, we would be so glad to have you do that. Even if you're at home, we can't hear you. We would love for you to do that. Send us your comments on your uh, Facebook Live that we have here. We'd love to see what you're thinking during the service. And we also invite you to find a candle. And then at the end of the service, we're going to have our candle lighting ceremony. So it'll be a virtual candle lighting ceremony as we sing together that traditional silent night. And though we aren't able to meet in person this year because of the coronavirus pandemic, we are still able to get together as a church and we are very much a family through this online platform. So we do thank God for keeping us connected during the whole season that we're in right now. And as we start tonight, would you join me in a prayer? Gracious God, we do thank you for your presence in our world through the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate this evening. Grant us the joy, the peace, and most of all, the love that comes from knowing that Jesus is with us. And it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. As we get started this evening, we are going to really enjoy some Christmas music. We're going to tell you some of the stories behind the songs. And again, today we're starting out with one that I think you all know. It's called Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It dates back almost 300 years to 1739. And it's credited with lyrics by Charles Wesley, who was a prolific hymn writer, and the music by George Whitfield. And both of these were founding members of Methodism over in England. And of course, that was the precursor to what we now have today in our Methodist churches. The music actually was from the great classical composer Felix Mendelssohn. So one of the great songs of all time, I believe, in our Christmas carol litany because it has some great words in it, such as glory to the newborn king, God and sinners reconciled, hail the incarnate deity, and pleased with us in flesh to dwell, Jesus, our Emmanuel. It's a great song. We're looking forward to hearing it now. So Joe and Regina, go right ahead, take it away. And again, folks, sing along at home. <laughs>
gave you a workout to get you started, didn't it, Regina? Yes. We're, we're hoping Regina's voice will hold up for all 11 songs. <laughs> We've heard of the 12 days of Christmas, and these will be the 11 songs of Christmas. So by the time we're done, everybody's going to get a good vocal workout. Beautiful job. Thank you both. Our next song is another famous one. We use it every year. We sing it every year for the Christmas season. Oh, come all ye faithful. Also known as Adeste Fidelis. You know, I used to see that in the hymnal when I was a kid. I wonder, what does that mean, Adeste Fidelis? It's Latin. And I never really got to take Latin. They quit teaching it about the time I was going to take it in high school. So I didn't really ever take Latin. But we know that this song has been attributed to all kinds of different people. If you read about it, lots of hymnals have it down as being written by John Francis Wade in 1744. But earlier manuscripts date back centuries earlier. So do you have your bread caught up yet, Regina? Are you ready? No? Okay, we're going to sing this one. God of God, light of light, oh come, let us adore you. Oh, oh come all ye faithful is this great song. song, one of my very favorites. I just love that song. Well, we have another song coming up, and again, we want to let Regina catch her breath and let Joe get his fingers nimble a little bit here in between. We're giving him quite a workout, but this next one will be another one you'll be familiar with. Angels We Have Heard on High. It's a Christmas carol set to the tune Gloria. Of course, that's special to me because my wife's name is Gloria, and she's out here running around in the sanctuary doing a few things, so we're glad she's here tonight along with a few others. And it's a traditional French song with paraphrased English lyrics written by James Chadwick. And this song paints the picture of the birth of Christ as we find in the second chapter of Luke. 
So all these songs are so much, they're, they're just musical renditions of what we find in Scripture, which is such a wonderful thing. It's talking about the shepherds outside Bethlehem when they encounter the angels who are singing and praising the newborn child. And what a night that must have been. So now we'll have this song, Angels We Have Heard on High. She go. I was going to have somebody go out and get her some water. Quick shop's up the street a couple blocks. We could have somebody go up there around to the quick shop and get her something, but I guess we're okay. We sing these songs every year, you know, and I think the one thing about Christmas songs is we never get tired of them. Just think we hear the same songs for years and decades, and some of the folks in this room have heard them for as long as they've been alive, you know, 60, 70 years, and they're and some up in their 80s probably. So, you know, these songs never get old, do they? Never get tired. Never get tired of hearing these beautiful songs. And just think some of these songs are 300 years old. They're, they're wonderful songs. They keep, they keep singing them every year. Somebody's going to do a new rendition, I bet, this year of Angels We Have Heard on High. But the message is what doesn't change. The message is that Jesus Christ had come into our world and become a baby, fully God. He was born of the Virgin Mary, came in as our Savior because God loved us that much. He wanted to send His Son to die for us ultimately on the cross. So Jesus Christ was born in that manger in Bethlehem. And yet, as we know, there was the, the, the manger that, Jake, that Jesus was laying in, it kind of cast the shadow of a cross, didn't it? Because ultimately, Jesus' mission was to go all the way to the cross. So that's the, that's the real story of, of uh, Christmas. We're, we're celebrating Jesus' birth, yes, but we're not forgetting the fact that he did die for us, and that was really his mission. So all these songs really point to that in one way, shape, or form. The next song we will have Regina and Joe uh, perform for us is It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. This song was composed... In 1849 by Edmund Sears. And it's unique in that his focus is not on Bethlehem. But it was more of a contemporary uh, inspiration that he wrote that song. 
It was considered to be his response to the just-ended Mexican-American War. And the song has been included in many Christmas albums through the years. All kinds of singers have performed them. And so, are you ready for It Came Upon a Midnight Clear? the midnight clear. You know, the Christmas songs, if we were to go around and ask everybody their favorite Christmas songs, I bet we'd have a nice variety tonight in here. But there's a couple we're going to sing in a little bit that are not as well known. So we kind of had to brush up on those a little bit. So stay tuned if you're thinking of flipping the dial to see what else is out there. Don't leave us, Facebook family. Just stay with us. You're going to enjoy the rest of this program. We're only about the halfway point, so you ain't seen nothing yet. But no, we are going to have a good time the rest of the way. And today here in Topeka, some folks are watching this in different parts of the country. I'm seeing on Facebook. Thanks all of you for joining us on Facebook tonight, live. And if you're watching this later, you're welcome to join us. We're glad you did. But we had a cold day in Topeka today, didn't we? It was cold. A chill was in the air. But we haven't seen the snow yet like we thought we might this year. I'm not complaining about that, by the way. But we have not seen the snow. And some of you in different parts of the country have had snow, I'm sure, and all kinds of things. So I hope that wherever you are watching this tonight, you're having a good Christmas Eve and that you will enjoy the rest of this program tonight that we've prepared. I know it's uh, going to be a blessing to you. 
One of the songs that we always sing at Christmas, and I don't think we really sing it much beyond this, is the first Noel. We all love that song, the first Noel. It's a traditional English carol that dates back to 1823, a long time ago, almost 200 years ago. Yet, what exactly does Noel mean? Does anybody really know what the word Noel means? I don't know if they do. We, I looked it up. It's an early modern English synonym for the French word of Christmas. So I guess it means the first Christmas. So there you go. That's a little trivia for you if you want to impress your family, either during your get-together in person tomorrow or if you're going to do a Zoom family reunion. I guess the Zoom family reunions wouldn't be all that bad because if, you wanna, if you're tired of hearing somebody, you can just exit out and, and mute them or whatever, right? I'm kidding. Well, we, we like to have fun at Christmas, and we hope you guys have a great Christmas. And, and Remembering, of course, Jesus Christ is the real reason for the season. But you know what? I think Christ wants us to have a good time. We're celebrating Jesus. That's what this is all about. We're celebrating our Lord. So at this time, we'll have Joe and Regina lead us in the singing of the first Noel. How long ago that seems, doesn't it, when we were all not socially distant and we were doing things together? And I remember a time that folks from Kansas Avenue and Oakland, United Methodist Churches, we got together on a Friday night. We piled into a few cars and we started making the rounds to different places. Our Clyde was driving and we had a good time. We went and did some Christmas caroling. 
And I thought, when was the last time anyone did Christmas caroling? A lot of people said they hadn't done it in many, many years. Of course, this year, I guess they said don't sing at all, you know, because of the, of the virus and everything. But hopefully we'll be able to get back to that next year. You know, we're looking forward to Christmas, but we're also looking forward to 2021, aren't we? I think we all are. And yet, you know, as we've been saying on our Advent devotionals, we're thankful for the blessings that God has given us this year. It's been a difficult year. It's been an unforgettable year, but God has been with us. And, you know, we think of those certainly who have really dealt with hardships and loss and our prayers are with them tonight. And it's been a tough year beyond the virus. Other people have had losses of other kinds, but, you know, through it all, we know that God is with us. He hasn't left us. He hasn't forsaken us. And he still walks with us every day. So we thank God that when Jesus Christ came into the world, he didn't just come in temporarily. He came in permanently and he came into our hearts to give us that hope for new life. So, you know, tonight it's getting dark. I look outside, I see it's slowly getting dark out here in Topeka. It'll be dark by about 515 or so. And, you know, we, uh, we know Jesus came into the world to bring us light. He came in to conquer the darkness. So we thank God for that. One thing about Christmas, it's hard to think about Christmas, isn't it, without thinking about little kids? You and I were just talking about that, Regina, a little bit ago. And she uh, takes care of some children, and they weren't able to quite have their party yet this year. Are they going to have it here next week, did you say? Yeah, next week. Next week they're going to have their party. And some of them were disappointed, weren't they? Yes, because we usually have it today, but parents had other things going on, so they didn't come. <laughs> We all have to be flexible, don't we? In this day and age, we all have to be doing different things. And part of the reason we're doing this virtual Christmas Eve service tonight. But you know, Christmas Eve, it's hard to think about without thinking about children. And the excitement that they still have, you know. As we get a little older, it's sort of like, oh, Christmas. Yeah, great. <laughs> but, but when you're little, man, it is something to look forward to. So we want to always honor the children. And we want to... Give them really the respect that they're due as the little ones. Because, you know, as the Bible says, a little child shall lead them. Sometimes we need little children to lead us into the joy and the mystery and the majesty and the mag magical nature of Christmas. They will do that, but we've got to let them lead us. We've got our grandkids coming over, I think, tomorrow. We've got our four-year-old and our five-year-old, Clarity and Kamara. And then there's our first Christmas for our new grandbaby, and her name is Nola. So Nola's going to hopefully come over and make an appearance tomorrow. So, and then we have our bigger kids, our 32-year-old and our 24 and our 23 and our 14-year-olds. We've got all kinds of children. I guess the thing is, you know, really the magic of Christmas never really ends. And, you know, we do celebrate Christ, but there's just a feeling in the air. It's different, isn't it, this time of year? Although there were quite a few car accidents at the peak of the day I was hearing on the scanner. But other than that, it was... People are just in a better mood for the most part. They're happier for the most part, it seems like. And we seem to get along better as, as, uh, as just people in the human family, not just the church family. But anyway, tonight is that night we think about children. And one of the favorite songs I believe that children really like is Away in a Manger. And that song was first published late in the 19th century. And it's used pretty much throughout the English-speaking world. And in Britain, it was one of the most popular carols. In 1996, the Gallup poll ranked it number two. Now, I tried to find out what was number one, but I couldn't find it. But Martin Luther was one of the ones that was attributed with writing this song. But now it's believed to be have uh, origins in America here. And we believe William Kirkpatrick in 1895 and James Ramsey Murray in 1887 wrote it. So this is a relatively new song. It's only about 140 years old. So are you guys ready for Way to Major? All right, here we go. Way to Major. <laughs>
I just love that last verse. Be with me, Lord Jesus, forever, I pray. Well, that's a beautiful song. You guys did great on that. Thank you so much for what you're doing tonight. Joe and, in, and uh, Regina doing a beautiful job. Like I said, Regina's getting a vocal workout. Joe's getting his hands worked out. So don't have to take a little break when they get home. I hope you don't. I hope, you, I hope your voice will be good enough for the next few days after this, Regina. Well, we've got a special time now. As we have been lighting these candles uh, the last couple of Sundays, we had to play catch-up. But the Advent candles are kind of a special thing. And, you know, we have these here as representatives of the different parts of the season. So the first one we lit had to do with hope. The next one, the theme of peace. The pink one there is joy. That's known as the shepherd's candle on the third Sunday of Advent. And then the fourth one last Sunday was on love. And then tonight's sort of the climax when we get to light that center candle, the Christ candle. So I've asked Ryan and Michelle if they would do the honors and do the readings here. So I'm going to hand you the mic, Ryan. And, and I think Michelle's got the paper there. So here you go. Come right on up. Come right on up. Advent hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace fills us that we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set flame to this Advent of affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled, our love is consummated, our joy is complete, and our peace is sealed. Rejoice, a Savior is born. Savior is born indeed. Joy to the world. Oh, great. Thank you, guys. You did good. That's a great reading there. Thank you, guys, for doing that. And that was Ryan and Michelle Hodges. We appreciate all they do here at the church. Well, there's dozens of Christmas songs and carols, and some that are more popular than others, as we were just saying. I was listening to the radio. You know, the most... The, the, we're got, you know, we've got drag races going on outside here, folks. So if you ever want to come out and, and visit us at Oakland Church, we may do an outdoor service sometime. Watch the drag races in between our, our scripture readings out here. Uh, and wait till they fire the motorcycles up. Then you're really going to be in for a treat here in Oakland. But no, I love it. The thing is, you see, that as we celebrate this time of year, it's a big world out there. And there's people around us that, that we know would love to know Jesus. So we want to share this message with everyone. So that's why we're so glad to be able to do this tonight on Facebook and to share this with you. Uh, back to this, uh, the most, uh, the highest selling record of all time was sung by Bean Crosby, I believe in about 1943 or four. And it was Silent Night. I'm sorry, White Christmas. Silent Night, he did a beautiful one too, but it was White Christmas that sold all those records. And they talked about, they played it. He and uh, Bob Hope went over to the World War II, and they had 100,000 military troops were watching, and they had tears streaming down their face as they sang that song, because just a few days later, thousands of them would die in the Battle of the Bulge. 
So th there's a lot of tradition and history with Christmas. But one of the songs that, that we are going to sing right now is called Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And it was also written by Charles Wesley. So Charles Wesley writes a hymn. It's going to be Bible-based. I'll tell you that right now. And he is credited with this song. Folks, if you don't know this one, listen to the words. Are y'all ready for it? Come thou long expected Jesus. mind reading our story, Christmas story? We're going to bring my wife up here. She didn't know I was going to do this. I'm going to let her read the uh, Christmas story tonight. I wasn't sure she was going to be with us. She was able to make it over. It's been a busy day. And Gloria, I've got it written right here. If you can, and, it's, and I'll just tell you where it is. Right there. Just flip it over. So right there. Then you can have a seat. This is my wife, Gloria. Many of you know her, but I'm glad she can join me tonight up here. And uh, thanks for being with us, honey. Okay. Thank okay. You. All right. And it came to pass, and it came to pass in the days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius, was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his exposed wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swallowing clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign until you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass that the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned and glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. And it was told unto them. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sweetie. So there's the Christmas story from the King James Version. I mean, there's a lot of different versions. I'm going to stand up here. You can see me okay. I think that's good. Yeah, that chair be a little hard after a while. Y'all can sit up here a little calisthenics here if you want. Nobody don't care. <laughs> but today's uh, devotional is called the Never Ending Christmas Countdown. You know, it's been one of these years where I think we've all been kind of counting down. We've been wanting to see some. I guess, resolution to some of the things going on. And I think all of us, whether we've admitted it or not, we have been waiting for this night right here. We've been waiting for Christmas. We've been waiting for Christmas Eve because we know there's, that's a night of hope. We know that's a night where things are just sort of seem to get back into their proper place. You know, sometimes things get offline and you can hit a button and it kind of brings it back. And this is kind of that night, I think, for, like, for us to hit a reset button and get us back on track. We've been waiting for a reason to hope. We've been waiting for the light and, and we finally found it because Christmas now is finally upon us. You know, it's more than a night that's filled with family get togethers, more than a night filled with special foods or presents, more than a visit from Santa Claus, more than the singing of jingle bells, more than memories from Christmas's past. It's even more than watching the movie Elf with your families on USA Network. Christmas, especially this year, offers us the hope that we all so desperately need, the, the hope that we've been anticipating. And that's the hope that only Jesus can bring us, that we are going to make it through this situation that we've been in. But you know what? There's always a situation, isn't there? There's never anything that goes completely smoothly, hardly ever. And we just learn by faith to hang on to Christ and he'll get us through to the next day. Now, granted, this has been a long, dark year. And like I said, a lot of difficulties for a lot of people. We have experienced the coronavirus pandemic. It has affected us all deeply. Many people have had the illness. Some have had family members that had COVID-19. Some have had friends and neighbors. And we have lost some family members and friends. We've seen hundreds of thousands of people here in America who have died from this disease. In spite of the promise for vaccines, you know, this night continues, this darkness continues, and there's really no complete end in sight. We can't just say, we got five more days and it's over. Wish we could, but we can't say that. And yet, we know that God's going to get us through one day at a time. When we, were, when we were kids, a lot of us, we could remember in the newspaper, there'd be a little picture in the bottom right-hand corner of the front page, and it would have a picture of a little child. And it would say, 25 days till Christmas. Somebody would send in a picture of their child, they'd pick, put it in there. Then the next day, 24 days till Christmas. And it would go on till Christmas Eve, one day before Christmas. We loved our Christmas countdowns. Some of them have Advent calendars. They kind of count down Christmas. But, you know, in spite of the anticipation, we knew that there was an end in sight. We knew there was a reason to hope that Christmas would soon be with us. And so the truth is right now that though it's been a challenging year for individuals and as a church, we know that Christ has not left us. He has stayed with us. He stayed so faithful to us. And you know, as I look back at all the different years of my life, I feel like this year right here, I have felt the presence of Jesus Christ more than I ever have before. Just as I felt like I've reached out and touched his hand, I've had to grab his hand. I'm like, Lord, you've got to get me through it. There's no other way to get through it. And I mean, I know people have had more difficulties than I have, certainly. 
But even still, it's been a challenge. And you know what I found? When I reached out and grabbed Christ's hand, he was already grabbing me. He was already holding on to me. He was already carrying me and lifting me and getting me to where he wanted me to go. So Jesus Christ is with us. And that's the, his word. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. He came into the darkness of his world 2,000 years ago. Things weren't great when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. They were under Roman rule. It wasn't easy. And Jesus came to be the Messiah. Now, some people were looking for someone that was going to free them from the bondage of the Roman Empire who, that had basically made them captives in their own country. They were living in occupied territory. And yet, we know Jesus came with a higher goal in mind. That was to set us free from our sins, from our selfishness, and from death itself. He came to give us life. He came to give us hope. So he is our king. He is victorious over everything he did. He set out to do. He accomplished it. And Jesus Christ today continues to shatter the darkness. He brings light to our world and to our lives. And he gives us hope. You know, no matter where you're at tonight, I don't know where everybody is that's watching this. No matter what you're going through, what you've been through, I think we could all say we all need a little bit of hope. We all need hope. And Jesus came to bring us that hope. It's a free gift for the taking. Tonight, I pray that you would make room in your heart for Jesus. Just like when Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem knocking on all the doors. And every one of them said, there's no room here in the inn. I'm sorry, it's full. And they had to go to the next one. Finally, they found this empty stable that they could have their baby in. And you know, sometimes I think our hearts are a little bit crowded. Would you open their heart up tonight? To Jesus, Give him room. Take things out that need to be taken out. Maybe it's time for a bit of a house cleaning as we get ready for a new year and make room for Jesus Christ into our life. If you have never invited him in your life, it's so simple. You just say a prayer like this. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. And I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me for my sins and come into my heart. Wash me clean. Help me to live for you. Thank you for loving me, Lord Jesus. I love you. Amen. You pray a prayer like that. We believe that you have been born again. You're in the family of God. That's all it takes. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. It's just a free gift that Christ came to give you. It's a night of gifts. Some of you have trees at home. You have gifts under the trees. And yet the greatest gift we know is Jesus Christ. It's a night for hope. And that Jesus gives us the greatest hope of all. May God's blessings be yours tonight and throughout the year ahead. Amen. Well, let's continue with our songs now. Another favorite of children. We love to think about kids on these nights of Christmas Eve is the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And it was inspired in 1865 by an Episcopal priest named Phillips Brooks, who he wrote the text after he had gone over and visited the Holy Land. So are you all ready for the next song? O Little Town of Bethlehem.
thank you enough for, for leading our music. You guys have kind of carried this program tonight. We're so grateful. How's your voice? Do you want to skip a few verses on the next song, Joy to the World? That's up to you. We're, folks, we're doing this live, as you can tell. So you, thanks for being with us. It's kind of spontaneous. How do you guys feel? You want to, you want to just do a, the first verse on this next one, on Joy to the World? Or how are you feeling? What do you think? It's up to you. We can just do one. That's fine. It's up to you. You want yeah. to just do one? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to save your voice. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, we missed being together as a church family a lot this year. And I know people are watching that are different places. I see a lot of visitors on here tonight. And thank you all for chiming in and, and telling us that you're here. And, you know, most churches have had to close their doors for at least a period of time, or at least to do things different. They've roped off uh, parts of their church. They've kept people separate. We were able to get back together for a short time. And, you know, from we, we met, of course, like everybody did, January, February, first part of March. Then we were meeting uh, virtually, basically, online from uh, uh, and basically just recorded sermons from uh, and, and some music from the middle of March till July. We thought things were going good. Then we had to re shut down everything again starting in November. So the churches have been so faithful and people have been so good. I mean, I know people are just really eager to get back together and I appreciate that. But I, I, th I just want to tell everybody watching this, don't give up on your churches, folks. And, and, and don't, don't just get out of the habit of going. It's easy to, to not to go to church. Trust me, I've been there. But, but make it, when we do reopen, which we will, God willing, here before long, make sure you come. Because we're going to enjoy seeing you. And when we finally do get together, man, we're going to have us a good time. Amen. So the, the next song is Joy to the World. It's written by a great hymn writer, Isaac Watts. And it is the most published Christmas hymn or carol in North America. So joy to the world. That's okay. That was great. Now I like how you played that, Joe. That, that was, that, I like it. I like I like when the when the songs are are, are yeah a little bit snappy. I don't like these just real. The oh my! I, I like them to move. I like a little bit of pep in. It. So praise God. Thank you for that. Hey, you know there's so many Christmas carols that have been written over the years, and you think about so many of them are talking about Jesus, which is of course the main reason. But we also have some that talk about the wise men. We have some that talk about the shepherds. We have some that talk about the angels. But you know who gets left out? Almost all of them. I don't know if any of them hardly ever that talk about Joseph. But you know the other one really that doesn't get spoken of much is Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, Mary was Jesus' earthly mother, but she carried Jesus for nine months. So she actually was his earthly mother. You know, he was born of the Holy Spirit, right? But... Not many songs talk about Mary. I came across one in our United Methodist hymnal that is absolutely fantastic, and I did a little looking into it. It's a lullaby from Czechoslovakia, of all places. And it's called Rockaby, My Dear Little Boy. It's sung from Mary's point of view. And this song was just added to the hymnal, I believe, in 1989. So... The words were only written in 1987. That's just a little over 30, what, 33 years ago. So I'm looking forward to you guys hearing this. Some of you, I bet, have never heard this song. As a matter of fact, I bet almost everybody listening tonight has not heard this song. And I'm telling you, it is a beautiful song. So are you guys ready? Okay. <laughs>
that it's it's a song like I said most folks have not heard that but it is a beautiful song and uh, you can look it up on uh, your Google but you know what's funny a lot of those uh, are just music there's very few of them that have actual singing on so we have come now to the end of our service again that's that time of night when we will light our candles and remember that silent night of a few thousand years ago when Jesus Christ the Son of God came into our world with the express purpose of saving us from our sins, bringing the light of God with him and offering the free gift of eternal life to anyone who would believe in him. That's everybody. He came for the whole world. The music to Silent Night was composed by Franz Gruber, accompanied with lyrics by Joseph Moore, and it was first performed on Christmas Eve of 1818 at the St. Nicholas Parish Church in the village of Oberndorf, Austria. And what happened was the organ had gotten damaged by flooding that year. And so Gruber had the music. He gave it to Moore and said, hey, can you put something together for a guitar? So that was how that song got started. And as you know, Silent Night is now one of the most beloved of all Christmas carols. Before we go tonight, I want to say a special thank you again to our musicians, Joe Campson and Regina Asher for being with us and for doing such a great job tonight. I'd like to thank Tom Lynn and Ryan Hodges back here for their work on the cameras, Michelle Hodges on the lights back behind there, and my wife Gloria for reading at the spur of the moment when she didn't know I was going to ask her to come up. And most of all, I'd like to thank you folks for watching tonight. We wish you a meaningful and a blessed and a very special Christmas this year and a very happy new year to come. Now, if you are able and you can do this at home, find a candle, find a match, light your candle as we start the singing now, and we conclude our service with Silent Night. God bless you all. Amen.
thank you everybody for the beautiful time with you tonight. Merry Christmas to each one of you. God bless you all.